In this video, I'll be talking about Asperger meltdowns, so that by the end of the video, you'll know what it's all about. Coming right up. Hey what's up, I'm Dan, I have Asperger syndrome, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on autism and Asperger, so consider subscribing to learn more. So everyone, welcome back to the Aspie world where you can understand autism from an autistic person. Before we get into the video, I just want to say that this video is brought to you by Quanthor energy power bracelet. Now they sent me this to try out and basically it's a bracelet and it's like a small bracelet with uh, specific metals and other types of minerals here on the inside and you, you put it on your wrist and you wear this. Now I've been wearing this for about a week uh, and I felt like it actually does help. Um, I, it's it's an unusual kind of feeling um, but a bit more like energy I guess you, you would say. I don't know the best way to explain it. It's kind of an interesting experience. So basically what this does is all the positive ions that are collected through like toxins and stuff in the air and pollution and other kind of stuff that gets into our bodies. This Thing releases them with negative ions and it actually helps clean the blood and making it, um, I don't know, less polluted. Just to clean your blood, I think this is a very, very cool product. I found this thing very, very useful. Please check the company out. The link is in the description below and I highly recommend you get yourself one. And I found it really, really helpful. So before we get started on today's video, I just want to ask you a quick question. Do you know anybody with an autism spectrum condition? And if so, are they related to you via work or family member? I'm just interested to know, so let me know in the comments below so we can start this conversation. So what is Asperger's syndrome really to begin with? Asperger's syndrome is a lifelong neurological condition which affects certain parts of the brain and impacts your ability for communications and things like that. So what I will do is I will leave a link in the card above here of what actually autism and Asperger's is so you can check that video out at the end of this video. So let's get started on Asperger's meltdowns. So an Asperger meltdown is where a person with Asperger's syndrome has uh, an overload of stimulation. So they, they have an overload and then they start lashing out. It could be uncontrollable crying, panic attack, um, out of breath, they could be um, thrashing about, they may actually hit their head, they may pull their hair, um, they could uh, maybe stamp their feet or throw their hands about and actually break some of their limbs. I've actually done this, I've broken my hand twice here and my wrist and my hand on this one um, and it happens quite often and I guess it's more often than not that um, you know that there's something kind of really like an outburst of anger like you've reached your maximum capacity of what you can take with and that's really what a meltdown is so it kind of like comes on comes on stronger and then boom it happens you have this meltdown which is this outburst of energy overload stimulation overload and you just kind of just I don't know you know you just everything just comes out it's like an energy every energy piece that you have in your body just blurts out in this meltdown so how does it happen now a meltdown could happen because of a trigger so there could be a single trigger that will trigger somebody so it could be um, that that triggers them to have a meltdown it could be that they have um, been losing a lot of sleep they're getting really really cranky um, because you know having this condition also keeps you up at night uh, you a lot of people find it difficult to sleep with Asperger's syndrome so having this um, it could just push you to your the end of your tether and then this is how a meltdown could happen and um, there's other ones where there could be a, an environmental factor an environmental trigger rather than a personal trigger um, these are all very varying factors of something that could actually happen and why does it happen a, an, an interesting one is why do these happen why do these triggers occur now the triggers happen because People with Asperger's syndrome like routines, so they like things to be the same. So say, uh, you know, someone was doing ha halfway through their daily routine and then it changed suddenly, this could cause a meltdown because the overload of the, the consequence of changing that routine is just too much. So, you know, if we were planning on going out to this place to have dinner, and we booked everything to go out to this place for dinner, so we thought, oh, we'll go out there for dinner, but we get there and it's closed unexpectedly, then that would cause a huge, huge panic meltdown. Um, there'd be worry involved there'd be emotional triggers involved there'll be all kinds of stuff involved and this would really uh, cause and set the scene for a, an emotional meltdown on the kind of an outburst and Asperger's meltdown so that's how that happens if you'd like to learn more about the symptoms of Asperger's and autism I'll leave a card in the card above here so you can go check that out or I'll leave it in a link in the description below so you can check that out after this video again so a lot of people ask what do you do if you see someone having these outbursts these um, autism Asperger meltdowns and the best thing to do is try and calm the person down it's difficult to do because the person is going through these kind of there's this motion of okay look let's put it into perspective it's like you know say uh, you say you're gonna go to the store and pick up some bread before going to um, I don't know birthday party so you go to the 
that you go to get the bread, but then the store is closed, and then you think, uh oh, so then you have to, your, your whole routine is thrown out. You have to like then find a bread somewhere else, or then you have to, you'll be late for the birthday party. It's not going to go exactly how you planned. It's not safe. It's not secure. And then all these triggers are like a domino effect. Imagine like hitting down loads of dominoes that you just can't get your head around, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, how's this ever going to end? So that's what kind of mind state you're in if you are having an Asperger meltdown, and then there's uncontrollable crying, there's a panic attack from the panic that's happening. You get short of breath, and your chest hurts, and you, you're stressed, and all this stuff is happening. So my advice would be that if you see someone having one of these meltdowns, is that you have to comfort them uh, and then trying to find out what is going on, see where the problem lies, and if you can actually help uh, that problem, maybe you'll come up with a solution because Plan Bs actually do work and they help reduce a lot of stress. So they say, hey, you know, there's another bakery on the street, which I know, so we can go there to get the bread. So those kind of things are, are, are ways of like, you know, problem solving for the issue that's at hand. Another one is to get the person to breathe because breathing is really important, real deep breaths because um, getting them to deep breathe will help them calm down um, and then make sure that they try not to hit themselves or hit the wall or hit the floor or something because again this is something that I've come across where uh, I might be lashing out, I'll hit my hands here, hit my hands there and then it would just break my hands or break my toes and it's not good so you want to try and avoid any of that and also hitting heads um, I do this quite a lot and, um, it, and I've learned how to deal with it now so I don't do it as much but now there are ways of reducing um, meltdowns so I'm going to talk a little bit about reducing meltdowns. So if you are you know, taking care of somebody with Asperger's syndrome or somebody with Asperger's syndrome yourself, this is what me and my uh, girlfriend managed to do to help reduce some of my uh, meltdowns and that's basically preempting what's going to happen. So you kind of think ahead a little bit. So you think, okay, well we're going to go to uh, a, a park or we're going to go for a walk up a mountain or in a field or something and we're going to know we're going to be there over lunchtime. So rather than me freak out when it gets to lunchtime, we're worrying that I haven't had food and I haven't had that thing because I have to eat at certain times and stuff because I get kind of worried about all these things. Um, my partner would then say, okay, well, we'll take we'll take food with us and we'll also take knives and forks with us and we'll also take a lot of water with us and we'll take everything, every eventuality that we can try and cover, we'll cover because the more eventualities that you can cover for, the best. So if we say, um, oh, we're going to go to this restaurant today, but if they're closed, we're going to go to another one or another one. So you have a plan A, B and C. This again is covering all eventualities and this is very, very powerful. So you may be able to uh, really reduce some uh, meltdowns that may actually happen because you you've already thought of, hey, if that doesn't go to plan, what's the next plan? And if you also go through those plan Bs, Cs and Ds maybe with the person who has autism spectrum condition, then they will understand that better they will understand the fact that there are other plans and then they'll see a route with those plans. So that's another way of doing it. Another one is looking out for triggers. So sometimes, um, you know, there, there may be certain triggers. So maybe certain noises or certain smells can set off um, a meltdown. So if someone is having a sensory overload to smells and sights, so you know to avoid those areas where the smells are present. So say it's a deli and the person doesn't like the smells in the deli because they trigger this meltdown, then you avoid the deli. If it's a store and the lights are um, too much for the sensory overload and uh, they can't deal with the lights then you don't go to that store and you avoid those type of lights so these are ways of reducing it so it's always kind of thinking clever and that's what we've learned and uh, like I've learned from my partner because she is uh, a, a professional working in the field with autism and Asperger's so she kind of helps me with, with all those things and I want to relay this information to you guys so for me one of the the main things is that after you have an, uh, an Asperger's meltdown you're completely drained emotionally physically mentally everything is just drained and you just feel like you know you're just this lethargic blob that just sits on the floor like whoa you're, you're just slumped you can't move it's you, you, your hands are tight you, all your muscles are tight your chest is tight it's horrible and one of the things is that recovering from that takes such a long time I feel like a recovery from a meltdown can take anywhere from three days to a week which is crazy because it completely just disfigures you for that whole week or the, that three days when you want to get on and do those things that you normally do so one of the things uh, that I will try and do is try and find ways of coping now ways of coping with it I found two things that work um, one is eating foods that make you feel comfortable that you know so I eat healthy most of the time um, and I try my best to be as healthy as possible but I know that I have comfort foods so having comfort foods helps really relax me and helps me kind of less tense so this is something that I would advise if you have a certain type of food that you really like and you have an, uh, a meltdown then after the meltdown maybe try having that food and the second one I think this one really really is like the big one for me and this really helps me a lot is that when um, I'm ha so I've had a meltdown and then I'm feeling like crap and then the day after or the same day I come home and I'm sitting on the sofa and I'm just really really just lethargic and I don't know what to do and I'm, I've got these like 
downer feelings because it also dips your mood and your mood goes right down. One thing I like to do is I like to create things like creating videos or making music or making websites or creating on, creating focus on work. And one of the things I like to do to create those things is look for instructions and uh, people in that field. So say you're interested in uh, motorcycles or, or BMX bikes, then you go on the internet and you search for how to build BMX bikes or whatever it is your usual research pattern is and then watch that information. So you're, you don't have to do anything physically, you don't have to concentrate or focus your mind, but you can still get that information for the thing that you really enjoy. And I found that that works the best out of anything, is that when you are watching something that, or reading something that you really enjoy, that your main focus or obsession of interest is, this helps so much with overcoming and uh, coming around from having a meltdown. If you'd like to learn more about autism and Asperger's, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And to see my next video, click up here. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.